This is question nine from paper three two from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International Education. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a card that'll bring you to the playlist that has all my solutions for the questions in this paper. And below the video in the description, you'll find a link to an image of this question so you can try it before looking at my solution. This is a really tricky question to start. Um, we have here the two curves they give us, y is equal to cosine x and y is equal to k over one plus x. We're gonna find k later in the question. It's just some constant, some number we don't know yet. Um, and they tell, they ask us to discover that the tangent of p, uh, the tangent of p is equal to one over one plus p. Now p is the point where they touch each other. So lots of students have trouble with this. Um, most started by putting p in. We know p is where they intersect, so let's put x equal to p. Let's put that in. That's y is equal to cosine of p and y is equal to k divided by one plus p. That's fine, um, this is true, and we can put these equal to each other, y is equal to y at this point. So we could say cosine of p is equal to k over one plus p. Most students got to here, and then they were a little confused, because this is not the same as this, but it's similar. They, a lot of students thought, well, how do I change cosine into tangent, maybe? Where does the k go? All of these things, um, and they were stuck. So a lot. Of, this is probably one of the lowest uh, scoring uh, questions on this paper. Now, what you needed to notice was that th these two curves they're not um, they're not just intersecting like this. They're actually sharing a tangent. They just touch each other, just barely touch each other. Let me draw it in here. There's a tangent line at the point P. That's the same for both of them. The tangent of one of them is the same as the other. That means dy dx for one of them is the same as dy dx for the other at the point P. So let me just write that. dy dx equals, uh, I guess we could rename each of these y's or something. So this is the function fx maybe, and this is the function gx. It'd be a little clearer then. The derivative of fx is equal to the derivative of gx because it looks a bit silly just writing dy dx equals dy dx but still the examiner will understand what you mean you don't even have to write it this would be fine without it i'm just pointing out that the derivative of this one is equal to the derivative of this uh, at the point p i should probably put that in x equals p at x equals p they're not the same here and here when x equals uh, pi over two they're not the same all right so what does that tell us well dy dx for one of them um, is equal to minus sine x, and then dy dx for the other point, for the other uh, function is, that's a bit difficult, so let's rewrite this. k multiplied by one plus x to the power of minus one. Uh, I always, I have trouble differentiating when they're like this. I know lots of students just leave them. They know this turns into a square. They know a minus appears, it's fine. I like to rewrite it like this. Because I'm more, I, I'm happier using the chain rule like this. So if we differentiate here, we get minus one comes down, minus one multiplied by k. Uh, we differentiate this bracket, one plus x. So that should be a one. Oh, that should be a one there. Uh, to the power of take one power away, minus two, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside the bracket, which is just one. So this is fine, let's uh, rewrite this as minus k over one plus x squared. This gives us something else that's equal to each other. Let me write that up here. Uh, what have we got? We have minus sine x is equal to minus k over one plus x squared. Um, now we can get rid of the minuses, I guess. Minuses are gone. This still doesn't give us tangent p. This is a similar problem. How do I turn sine into tangent? Where does the k go? It's a similar problem, but remember, we, we still have, this one's still true. This is still true that this point is equal to this point. Give us this information. The fact that uh, the, the slope is equal to the slope gives us this information. Let's put them together. Cosine p is equal to k over 1 plus p. How about we divide sine p divided by cosine p, 
Now you should be thinking that because we know we want to get tangent. We divide the right by the right. The, the sorry, the left. Uh, what's on the left here? Divide what's on the left here, and divide what's on the right here. What's on the right here? It's fair because sine is equal to this guy. Cosine is equal to this. So if sine divided by cosine must equal this divided by this. So let's see. I need a bit of room for this one. Um, one plus x. Sorry, I. I don't know, where, where, when did my x start appearing? Um, ah, yeah, my, I left my x in the whole way. I should be putting p in these points, shouldn't I? This is the derivative when x equals p. The derivative when x equals p. Let's just change it up here. Sign p. And we put a p in here. Apologies for that. And we put the p in here. Because this is only true when x equals p. Right, so, um, oh, this is just the top row. Which one? It's this one here divided by k over 1 plus p. Let's see, what do we get? Sine p divided by cosine p is tangent um, p. I'll run out a bit of room there. Let's, uh, <laughs> let me try and make, my, um, make use of my space a bit better. Tangent p on this side, let's see, k divides the k. Uh, 1 plus p divides the 1 plus p. So we're left k divided by k is 1, and we're left with 1 plus p on the box. And that's what they want. That's what they wanted us to show. Is that the, that's the answer to part A then. Show that p satisfies this equation. Very difficult. So many students didn't do it, weren't able to do it, because they didn't realize this second uh, leap of logic. Now, it is important to realize that you could still do part B, because they gave you this. This is what you need to do part B. But they gave it to you. And they did that because they were worried students wouldn't get part A. So do not give up on an entire question because you fail part A. Now let me rub this out. I'll keep uh, this piece of information and we'll do part B. Okay, part B, we have this information from part A and they even turned it into this for us. All they've done is taken the inverse tangent of both sides. And they've added in this n plus 1 and n. A bit confusing to us, but... We should be used to it if we've studied the iterative formula or done practice on it. So that's us to use this formula to determine the value of p, uh, correct the three decimal places, and they want us to write out five decimal places each time. Now I'm going to need my calculator for this. Oh, I shouldn't have rubbed out my picture, because I will use the picture to make a guess. Hopefully you still have it in front of you. Because I need to make one guess, basically. I need to guess one answer, sorry, this one here. My first answer, p1. Let me write it over here. I need to guess what P1 is equal to. Now, we're trying to find P. So you can look at the picture and say, well, it's about halfway between 0 and pi over 2. So let's guess pi over 4. Really, it doesn't matter what you guess. Um, you will get there. Um, but you might as well guess close to it. Okay, so P1 is equal pi over 4. Then to get P2... All we need to do is P2 must equal, because it tells us here, we just put the number 2 in here. P2 is equal to the tangent, the inverse tangent of 1 divided by 1 plus, and what number here? If this is 2, if n plus 1 equals 2, well n must equal 1. So P1 goes here. And this happens each and every time. Now there's a really good, easy way to do this in the calculator. On a calculator, if you tell the calculator that this is an answer, so just write out, uh, let me see, we'll get pi divided by 4, and press equals. Your calculator now remembers this as an answer. So now on a calculator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the inverse tangent, 1 divided by 1 plus, and I'm going to write answer here, the, the answer button on the calculator. And it will give, it will use this answer here. And this is going to be good because I can stay doing it as many times as I want. You know what? Let me make a little room and I'll write all these numbers out over here. In fact, let's uh, get the decimal numbers for P1. So P1 is equal. They want five decimal places. 0 0.78538. So it will round up to 4.0. All right. So P2, if we put this into a calculator... Bear with me here at the inverse tangent of 1 divided by, I'll put an extra brackets in here on my calculator. I'm always careful with my calculator. 
Uh, and we close the brackets. Okay, press equals and it will tell me the answer is 0 0.51056. Now what's happened here is we made this guess. It's the second guess, uh, which is better, was this. They said, this formula here said, uh, it's not quite right. Here's my next guess. And it's going to stay guessing until the answers all start looking the same. So the advantage of using the calculator this way is the calculator now remembers this formula, but the answer has changed to this. So if I press equals again, it will do all the work for me again without having to type it out. So my next answer will be 0 0.58477 if I round up. Do it again. I did this earlier. I seem to remember I have to do it a few times, which is why using the calculator is very helpful. 562907. If we do it again, let's see what. Oh, let's also write three decimal places here because they want the answer correct to three. 0 0.785. Zero, let's put approximately, approximately here, 0 0.511, 0 0.585, <clears throat> this one be 0 0.563, we're, we're rounding in on a number here, not quite, quite right yet, 0 0.569195, this is approximately five, six, uh, nine. What we're looking for is when these start repeating. These will start repeating if you go long enough, but they only want these, this level of accuracy. Usually you're finished after P4 or five. So apologies for this. They made this one a little harder because this is an easy formula to write. So if a student had to write this every time, they could, they could do it. 0 0.5673. Um, Three seven, which is approximately five six, uh, five six seven. <laughs> I think it's only one more. I hope zero point five six seven nine uh, zero zero. Okay, which is approximately zero point five six <laughs> five six eight. Um, he, the eight guess, oh my God, we have to go deep on this one. 0 0.567748, and that is approximately 0 0.568 again. And if you stay going, and I recommend you do a few more maybe, you will find just this every time. You won't get any better than this. This will be more accurate. If you want to the fourth level, you'll need to stay going. If you want to, oh, I've done too many here. If you want to the fifth level, um, stay going, probably another three or four, you'll get to the fourth level, and another three or four after that, the fifth level. Anyway, that is the answer to part uh, B. And um, let me, I'll make a little bit of room and do part C. I still need to find K. I should have kept my formulas from part A. I'll write them up again. So for part C, they want us to find what K is. Now remember from earlier, we had cosine X is equal to K over one plus x or we could have used the other one i think it was minus sine x is equal to minus k over one plus x all squared and um, although this is shorter so we we'll use this now remember we now know what x is or p you could say we now know that this is cosine of 0 0.568 approximately anyway is equal to k over one plus 0 0.568 if i rearrange this i get one point five six eight sorry that's just one plus this it's clearly one point this multiplied by cosine zero point five six eight and that is equal to k so just put that in the calculator we will get k is equal one point three two and that's um that's the full the full question fairly standard b and c do not get afraid of b and c you can do, you do these every year so you just learn how to do them they will be the same every year, roughly, and uh, you should be able to get full marks for that. A was a bit tricky. Don't worry too much if you messed it up. Lots of good students did. Okay, if you have any follow-up questions from anything we've done, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching and have a great day.